One of the biggest complaints that we get from guys that are in the dating marketplace is the flake rate. Women plan a date with them. Oh, I'll come out with you, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, and then gone. she doesn't show up or she doesn't respond to text or whatever. Anytime a girl flakes on a guy, what it simply means is something better came along. And thanks to the internet, thanks to Instagram, thanks to dating apps, etc., which dating apps heavily favor women, by the way. Guys absolutely fail dating apps. Only about 5% of guys even get swipe right in the first place. Um, women have more abundance than ever before and they have more options than ever before. And I don't think guys understand. We've interviewed 24, 2,500 women now at this point on our show. And what I've come to realize is the abundance of options that modern day women have is absolutely influenced how they view the opposite gender. Most women, unfortunately, do not respect most men. Most women think most men are below them. As we move away from patriarchy, it becomes increasingly apparent that women may benefit from certain aspects of traditional structures. In today's dating landscape, some argue that modern women might be pricing themselves out of the market by placing high demands while offering less in return. Advice often given to women may encourage behaviors that many men find unsuitable for a serious long-term commitment. There exists a significant disconnect between what men seek in relationships, such as kindness, virtue, and loyalty, and what modern women perceive as reasonable expectations. Men often desire basic qualities and a collaborative partnership, seeking companionship, physical intimacy, and someone who cares about making their lives less stressful through shared responsibilities like cooking and cleaning. Complications arise when women assert that they work too and shouldn't have to fulfill traditional domestic roles while simultaneously expecting men to fulfill traditional roles like buying gifts, taking them out, protecting them, and offering compliments. This perceived imbalance can lead to frustrations and misunderstandings in relationships. Men argue that they are expected to maintain traditional attributes such as strength, stoicism, bravery, physical stature, intelligence, effective leadership, altruism, and the ability to provide for a family. However, they often feel that the reciprocal traditional qualities in women, like submission, kindness, softness, modesty, and focus on home care, are less emphasized and even criticized. The expectation for men to adhere to traditional roles without receiving the traditional qualities in return is seen as unfair. Men argue that if women are quick to criticize men for not meeting their expectations, the same logic should be applied in assessing women's suitability for a good man. In examining the dynamics of authority and responsibility, some argue that women currently possess authority without the corresponding responsibility, while men bear the duties and responsibilities without equivalent authority. This asymmetry is likened to tyranny and bonded labor, respectively. The call to action for women is to understand that respect is earned, not automatically granted. The analogy is drawn to a product for sale. If it isn't attracting buyers, the solution is to either adjust the expectations, lower the asking price, or improve the product, but not to blame the customers. In a world marked by technological advancements and the vast opportunities presented by the Internet, this era seems ideal for women to actively participate in intellectual and engineering roles. However, a curious observation persists. Some women choose to engage in selling their bodies. This raises questions about whether this inclination is a result of evolutionary factors or reflects a timeless aspect of women's behavior. The straightforward perspective is that men do not desire or appreciate a woman perceived as competing with them. The pursuit of peace in a relationship with a modern woman may seem challenging. While modern women are free to adhere to this mindset, those who diverge from the prevailing narrative with intelligence and resilience are more likely to thrive. The obstinate and thoughtless ones might not endure the challenges, especially if self-centeredness defines their worldview. The idea is proposed that living in society requires active contributions from individuals, and selfishness can lead to solitude. Perhaps this societal structure serves as a mechanism to weed out undesirable traits, allowing only the resilient to endure. A call to both men and women is made, encouraging them to align themselves with spiritual principles for inner peace. Exploring the dynamics of what men seek, it is argued that male contributions have historically dominated the arts and sciences. The assertion is made that male brains are wired differently, leading to distinct priorities, such as the pursuit of power, wealth, and intimacy, which manifest in societal accomplishments. A shift is observed where some women seek attention through promiscuity and exhibitionism, 
potentially diminishing their perceived value to high-status males. Men who choose to go their own way are often labeled as women haters, but they argue that their primary concern is preserving their identities and achieving peace. This movement challenges traditional expectations and asserts that women depend on men for survival. If this dependency were severed, society might crumble. However, the alternative viewpoint suggests that women working together and supporting each other in the workforce is a consequence of their ability to generate wealth independently. The conclusion emphasizes that donning pants does not automatically confer a male identity, and it challenges preconceived notions about women's relationships and roles. Considering that women likely didn't construct their homes or establish the majority of businesses and government organizations they work for, the concept of women going their own way is questionable. Women can only strive for independence after the labor and resources have been provided for them, which are often controlled by men, leading to understandable reservations. A critique is offered regarding how women undermine themselves. The criticism men face for going their own way is attributed to women desiring control over resources. Expressing this desire openly might unveil their dependency on men, a realization they might be reluctant to acknowledge. The argument is made that if women were deprived of workforce opportunities, they would revert to seeking husbands for financial support, prioritizing lifestyle over intimacy. The emergence of public romantic involvement between women is noted to have occurred primarily in the middle to late 20th century. The prediction is posited that as more men pursue independent paths, accumulating wealth and shaping their lives, women may face increasing financial challenges, potentially relying on credit and government assistance. The communication style of women is discussed, suggesting that societal norms prompt them to say one thing while meaning another. This indirect approach is attributed to both societal norms and potentially biological factors. The notion is presented that women, being less literal than men, often attempt to influence through subtlety, entering thoughts indirectly. A hypothesis is proposed that women avoid being upfront due to a fear of consequences if something goes wrong, as men could easily discern their motives. The argument is made that this behavior may be rooted in women historically being physically and emotionally weaker, with successful influencers passing on their genes to subsequent generations. In the past, the pain and suffering experienced by men in war were perceived as less burdensome than the contemporary scenario of a divorced man losing his house, children, wife, and sense of purpose. The notion is put forth that women set a stage for a staged game, where love becomes a battleground, projecting vulnerability to empower women by prompting men to step up, engage, and take care of them. As women increasingly demonstrate authority, the prediction is made that men will pursue alternative motivations for living beyond defending women. The question is raised about the necessity for men to provide protection if women no longer require it. The conflicting desires of women are discussed, where they seek men to remain by their side, care for them, and listen to their concerns while also wanting to assert independence. The impact of feminism is examined, suggesting that, despite the promise of freedom from male influence, Many Western women suffer from unhappiness and loneliness, evolving into what is colloquially referred to as cat ladies. A future cultural shift is anticipated, positing that as society becomes more conservative, women may come to acknowledge their reliance on men, although doing so may initially be considered taboo. The claim is made that, contrary to the desire to fuck the patriarchy, the current societal structure leans towards a matriarchy, with systems and institutions favoring women in every aspect in the U.S. and the West. And that's it for today on Sigma Traits. Make sure you hit that like button, smash that subscribe button, and don't forget to ring that notification bell. Support this channel through membership. You can also support through PayPal link in the description. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. See you all tomorrow.